for the first time in here. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's how you start a morning right there. That's my knock in case you didn't notice. Hey, come on in. So why don't you give us a tour of hey, your, uh, it's of good your to place see you guys. here? Well, you know, this is the this is a great place. You know, we uh, it's, it's pretty new to us, to me and Micah. We've had we've had a big one. We decided to downsize a little bit. Didn't need quite as much space as we've had in the past. So uh, this is this is the jumping jack blackout, as you can see over here. Um, on my side of the bed. <laughs> You know this. I've, I've got the canvas kind of laid out. Um, got I got about plenty of space over here on this end. Um, we got the, this is the dining room. If you want to look over, this oh, is dining. This okay. is the dining room. Dining room slash living room over here. Slash office. Slash office. And then over here on this side, you see you've got Micah's side. Um, you know he's got his editing studio as well. You got the computer here, uh, bed, everything. You know it, it's tight quarters, but. You know, it works. It, it, it does a good job for for what we need. What do we have for uh, power and lighting in this in this? So mode? we've got a uh, Mr. Heater down here keeping us warm because it is very cold in the mornings and in the night. We've got these awesome, you can't really see them, but these are what we've got for our lighting Walmart specials. Uh, I think it was $14 for four lights. With batteries. With batteries. So we've got two of them hanging up. I mean, it's got really everything, you know, two coyote hunters, two coyote hunters could ask for. Yeah. You know, got the jet boil that we got to get. Well, oh, might as well do that while I'm just sitting here we'll talking. Up. Installed. And we're ready. Like that. Here, hold that. You guys want to see something really cool? This is how living in style we are. Are you ready? Oh. Oh, you're it's ready? It's dark. You want lights back on? I'd like, I'm scared. Oh. Oh, I got oh. lights back on. Lights back on. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got a remote for their hunting lights? Seriously. Apparently we do. Kind of a big deal. Yeah, I don't know if you know this or not, but kind of a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, not exactly how we wanted to start out the day. Oh, man, lens is still foggy. Woke up this morning, coyotes howling all night around us, so. That was a good sign. Yeah. It's the same place we camped the night before, and we didn't hear a single one, but no. we were pretty asleep. So, yeah. anyway, got the truck to leave, and when the tires as flat as flat could be, we got the pump out, jumper cables hooked up to the pump, trying to get it pumped up, see if we can find the hole and just plug it. Um, but yeah, we might not get much hunting done today. Head to another area and back into cell service and take care of some administrative stuff. <laughs> we got a lot of a lot of stuff we're getting behind on because we haven't been in cell service enough to really take care of stuff during the day. Probably into Twin Falls uh, around noon and take care of a bunch of that stuff. So we might only get two or three stands today. We were hoping to get four or five, but we might only get two or three, if that, with the flat tire, depending on how long that takes us. It's a good start to day five, I mean. Yeah, great, grand, wonderful. No yelling on the bus! <laughs> So the first half of the day, we did a whole lot of this. Walking to a stand, getting set up, and calling for 20 minutes and calling nothing in. So we decided to leave and move to a new area. You guys will probably get tired of hearing us say this, but if you're not calling coyotes in in an area, you can grind it out and you might get one here or there, but Kind of our general rule of thumb is if we're not calling a coyote in at least every third or fourth stand, then we're not doing good enough and you need to be moving. Otherwise, you're looking at one, maybe two coyotes a day. Well, guys, day five is not going well. We know there's coyotes all over in here. They're howling all night long in the morning. Something's not right. Not sure what it is. I don't know if somebody's been through here and called this recently or what's going on, but they're just not responding. We've said it before, if it ain't working, move. We've also said before that weather is a huge factor and I've never really dealt with weather exactly like this before. There's just, just stagnant air pattern that's been sitting in this area for probably two weeks. No wind, super cold in the mornings, but then really warm in the afternoons. 
And one of the biggest things that we found over the years that basically turns coyotes on to responding to a call is when there's either right after a storm or right before a storm, before it gets really windy. They know the storm's coming. They know they need to get a few meals in before the storm gets there. And then after the storm, they're hungry because they're not doing much. So those weather systems really play a big role in how they respond to the call. It's not that they don't get out and feed and things like that. It's uh, it's just how they respond to the call. At least that's what we found anyway. So I think we're gonna go ahead and pack it up for the morning, um, head up the road, find a different area, uh, get a few stands in if we can, get the things done we need to get done for the day. Uh, we got a bunch of emails we got to check. We got to get some stuff going for the store. Got to get a few pictures emailed there. Whole bunch of, like I said, just administrative crap that nobody likes to do. It's not near as fun as, as coyote hunting, but when you're trying to do what we're doing out here, um, filming everything you're doing and trying to keep everything going, um, got to take the good with the bad and get the stuff done. You got to get done. And boom, just like that, we got a double with the Creedmoor. Boom, baby. I knew there was another one there. I knew there was, because this one kept looking back. It's not the Creedmoor. It's not the Creedmoor. <laughs> I was cursing this thing, because we hadn't had any luck. We moved to a new spot, moved up the road like an hour. First stand we made in here, just crushed the double right here. Hell yeah. Both of those, that first shot was a pretty long shot facing, but he wasn't coming off the hill. Dead nuts 200, the other one. I waited for him because he was skyline. I didn't want to take that shot. Yeah. So I waited for him to take a couple steps off this side of the hill. So then I looked back down the ridge this way six, seven minutes later and saw another one skyline. But we brought him in close. Hell yeah. We don't suck. Well. <laughs> I don't know if I go that far. Guys, I'm telling you, these new sounds on these Lucky Duck callers, if you guys haven't gone over and checked out Rick's new sounds, he's got a whole entire new sound library. All new distress sounds, new vocal sounds, 
just tons of it. So go to verminatorpc.com, check them out. You can go through and select which sounds you want on the SD card. You select which ones you want, you pay for them, he puts them on the SD card and sends them to you. That's also the nice part about having a road that runs through your stand. Micah can drive up right there. We were sitting up there on the hill. Other coyotes laying right here on the hill. Don't have to drag them far at all. And here's the other one. This looked like a big coyote. Had a really, really dark face on him. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Creedmoor didn't even do anything to him. Big pretty coyote. And boom. Truck's right there. Man guys, sometimes it's crazy how many coyotes come to the call that you don't see. We had one earlier, about three days ago, that there was a triple that came in. This was a triple and then had another single that came in. I didn't even see that one for it until like right when you said how far is that and I was like, okay, I got him now. Did you kiss, did we both kiss at the same time on this one? On the first one? Yeah. Only reason I shot him there is because he had me. I'm in the oh, he had you pinned. pinned, yeah. I think he saw me point, honestly. Really? Yeah. Well, guys, I'm pretty sure I missed that first one <laughs> on camera. It's all right. We got it. We got it on scope vision. You oh, you did? Oh crap! I probably did. I closed the app. <sighs> you get? Wait, what? Oh, you turned back. Yo, you closed it before. It saved, huh? Yeah. We might have been early enough, it might have saved Let's it. Let's see. Yeah, we got it. Okay, good. Throughout this series, you guys will be seeing a lot of footage of us shooting coyotes through the scope vision. If you're interested in getting one, head over to phonescope.com, use promo code HIDDEN, save yourself 10%. Alright guys, so there's a little uh, pointer. I'm going to try and do this so you can actually see me instead of just a shadow, because I always do it the other way. Let's try this. Maybe that'll work better. Totally crooked, but that's okay. Um, pointer with the Scope Division app. Um, if you record for a long time, especially sitting on a stand, like a lot of times we'll just let it run, um, then you need to make sure that you don't close the app before it's done saving, otherwise you'll lose your footage. So remember, don't close the app until it's done saving or you'll lose the footage. And I was totally zoomed out on that second one too because uh, I was too busy digging for the rangefinder trying to get Garrett a range on it. You might kind of have to guide me too. I don't have a clue where he was at. No? Yeah, I, I hardly ever know where they are because I'm always looking straight into the camera. This one might take us a while to find, guys. I'm going to turn the camera off. Nice. Take it. Started off the day with nothing, and we have three, almost four now. That last one was a long shot. Right at 400. All right, guys, quick closeout for day five. five? Yep. Yeah, it's only day five. We've already lost track, so we're going to start keeping an actual count. So uh, it was a rough day to start. Got better at the end. Been a strong. And Been a strong. Yeah. Considering we only made three stands this afternoon. Won't give, well, I guess we can't say we won't give it away because you're watching it. So yeah. Finished strong. Ended up with uh, three and three stands. A double and a single. Only made a few stands. Well, we only made a handful of stands. I really didn't even hunt. We made a total so, of seven stands today. Yeah, I really didn't even hunt today. Just got here to Twin Falls, grabbing a motel shower, decent meal. 
And on to day six and seven tomorrow, we're going to be hunting with uh, Rusty from Coyote Assassins at least tomorrow, and then possibly, possibly coming into Sunday. So looking forward to that for sure. So we will catch you guys in the morning. The cool thing we're doing tonight, if somebody shows up, we're actually giving away a Lucky Duck call if anybody can find us where we're at dinner. So that's kind of a, a cool thing we're doing, just giving away one of the calls we've got. So if anyone finds us at dinner, I know this is going to be playing after, but still be something cool to, that we're doing. All right, guys. So we did the Instagram story, and we have a winner. We got Austin here. Say hi to everybody. Hey, guys. And we have the call out in the truck, so I'm going to run him out there and uh, go get the call and get out of this noise so you guys can uh, hear what's going on. All right, so we got our winner here. I'm going to open my truck up and get him his call. You guys, uh, well, I guess you won't see it on the video. But on Instagram, keep following us, guys, because as we get out and do this more and more, we're going to be giving away more and more stuff. So make sure you guys stay tuned to everything we're doing because we're going to be getting a lot more products to be giving away. And I personally like to give them away to people that follow us uh, a little bit more frequently and in the areas that we're in. You know, we like to travel a lot and get out and see everybody, uh, travel around, meet new people, see new areas. So follow along, and when we show up there, you might win something. And there you go, yeah. Lucky Duck Riot. So I have only used that one time. I made three stands with it with a friend of mine. We called in one and he caught our wind and left. So yeah. it's been used once. It's gonna be used a lot more than that. Nice, heck yeah, dude, that's awesome. Well, hopefully you kill a lot of dogs with that thing. Oh, well, I hope so. Congratulations, man, and thanks for following along. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's go grab some dinner. Let's do it. All right, guys, so today you notice we are actually shooting a different gun. This is our new custom six Creedmoor from Rolling Bones Outfitters. Um, if you guys have any questions about what Rolling Bones is, it's a great opportunity for hunters, great, great opportunity to make money. Uh, there's, just, there's just a whole lot more to it than we can really explain in this video. But definitely something that I think everybody should look into. If you hunt several states, if you want to look at making some money in the hunting industry, it's a fantastic way to do it. If you have any questions about that, Send it to our email at rbohidden.gmail or at gmail.com and ask us any questions about that. We'll answer them as best you can, but loving that gun. It's an absolute hammer. Mike has shot his deer with it this year on the deer hunt. Um, we switched scopes, didn't have it quite dialed in, got it dialed in yesterday afternoon, then shot three coyotes with it today. And as far as the six Creedmoor goes, it's, it's a hammer on coyotes and is fur friendly on the three that we shot with it. I mean, amazing gun i'm going to be shooting it a lot more both of us are going to be shooting it a lot more so yeah if you have any questions again that email is rbo hidden at gmail.com and we'll answer any questions we can and steer you in the right direction